Welcome back to Master Data Management 1. In the previous video, you learned about the second step in the MDM lifecycle, deploy. You also deployed your contact model into your contact repository. In this video, we're going to take the next step in the deploy process, which is setting up our sources. Now that our model is deployed to our repository, we need to set up our sources. A source is an entity representing a system, such as Salesforce or MySQL, that contributes to master data and or accepts updates of master data. We will be setting up two processes that will connect to a single source, transform the data, and send it to our MDM repository. In order to synchronize our source applications between the Atomsphere and MDM platforms, we need to identify our source systems within our MDM solution. To do this, we'll need to access the Sources tab located on the MDM Lifecycle panel. Selecting the Sources tab will allow you to create sources within your MDM account. As is with most of our MDM tools, the first source you create will give you a small description and a large Create button, as shown on the slide here. When you click the Create Sources button, you're going to notice that you have three fields that can be populated. The first one is the Name field. And this sets the name of the new source, which has a maximum of 255 characters. Now the name is a field that can be changed and is only used for the user's understanding. So this is not used by the actual MDM system. The second field we need to enter is the source ID. And this field sets the ID for the new source and has a maximum of 50 characters. The source ID is used to refer to the source within integrations and in calls to the repository API endpoints. Allowable characters are uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, the underscore, and hyphen. One thing that's very important to understand is that once a source ID is set, it cannot be changed. The source ID is also used as a by reference tool which allows you to give the specific source a unique name. If you have multiple source systems of the same type, Within the same model, it's a good idea to put enough detail into the source ID to easily differentiate between the two. It's also very important that you adhere to any internal naming conventions during the onset of development because the only way to modify the source ID after it's been created is to delete that source ID and inadvertently clearing any channels you have previously set up within that source. And finally, the third field we have is the entity ID URL. This sets the URL template that MDM will use to construct target URLs for links rendered in a deployed models data tab to entities in this source system. In the template, the string ID serves as the placeholder for the source entity ID. This option will only function with systems that support deep linking. Now, once we've created a source, it will appear within the sources tab. You can confirm the name, source ID, and the last date the source was modified and who modified it. You can also click on the Actions button, represented by the COG icon. And you can note that you have two options here, Configure and Delete. Configure allows you to change the visual name and the entity ID, but not the source ID. And Delete will simply delete the source. Now that you know a little more about the sources, I'm going to demonstrate exercise number eight, where I will configure our two sources. Feel free to follow along in the activity guide, and you will have time after the video to try it on your own. I'm going to switch over to the MDM platform where we left off. From here, we can get to the Sources area by clicking on the Sources tab within the MDM Lifecycle panel. And that can be found at the upper left side of the screen. From here, we are prompted to create a new source by clicking on the large green button in the center of the screen here. So I'll go ahead and do that. And we can see that the new window that drops down has our three different fields that we can enter information into. The first one that I'll do is the MySQL source. So I'll simply type in MySQL. And since we only have two sources that we're working with, we don't have to worry about them running into naming issues. So I'm just going to go ahead and use MySQL for the source ID as well. For this training class, we're going to leave the entity ID URL blank and simply click on the Save button to save our source. And now you can see that the MySQL source has been added to the sources list. We can see the name, the source ID, and the last modified date, and who modified it. You can also click on the little cog action icon to see that we have the configure and delete options here as well. 
Now we have one more source that we need to create. So I'll go ahead and click on the create a source button here at the upper middle part of the screen, which opens up this window once again. The second source we're going to create is for Salesforce. So we'll name that SFDC. We'll do the same for the source ID. And then we'll go ahead and click on the save button so that we can save our source to our sources tab. And now that both of our sources are set up, they're now ready to attach to our model, but that's going to come in a different exercise. All right, so now it's your turn to go ahead and try it on your own. So go ahead and add those sources to your sources tab. And once you're complete, you can go ahead and start the next video.